You're listening to the Wanderlust Swingers Podcast with Aussie hosts Kate and Daryl. If you're curious about exploring your sexuality or the swinging, hot wifing and non-monogamous lifestyle, you've definitely come to the right podcast. Or maybe you just love travel adventures. Either way, we share our personal, sometimes juicy, sexy stories as well as swingers club and event reviews, interviews with other sassy people and of course our global swinging adventures. We try to bring you a look into the diverse lifestyle that the swinging and non-monogamous community has. We hope you enjoy. Now let's Let's get into the episode. Hi right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Wanderlust Swingers Podcast. This is episode 130. Back? Yeah, welcome back. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming they're listeners. Regular listeners. Absolutely. What about for those new people out there? Welcome to the Wanderlust Swingers Podcast. I'm glad you guys tuned in. Thank you so much for listening. Today's episode is the best and worst Moments of hosting podcaster Palooza. Yeah. Is it hosting or the best and worst just of? Maybe this is the best and worst of podcaster Palooza. Yeah. Yeah. Or as we're going to call it from now on in, PCAP. Yeah. Because fucking podcaster Palooza yeah. is way too hard. Hashtag PCAP 2021. Uh, so get comfortable, get involved. We are going to run you through. I mean, I'm lying down on the couch. I you, can't get much more comfortable than this. You, you cannot. I'm You're... actually, yep, microphone resting on chest. This is, this is me. Yep, you're breathing quite heavily into the microphone. Hey, but before we get into any of our episode uh, discussion topics for today, I want to give you a cultural tidbit. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I've been, I've been carrying on doing I, that. I, I know. So the cultural tidbit for today is uh, it's about Florida, right? Because Podcaster Palooza was held in Florida. So I thought it would be only appropriate for the cultural tidbit to be about Florida. Florida or Floridians? A little bit of both. Are you, are you ready? I'm, I'm gonna lay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna lay this mac down. I'm gonna spill this tea. I'm embracing myself like okay. nobody's business. Hold on to your seats, people. Cultural tidbits. If you have sex in any other position than missionary, you are breaking the law in Florida. I actually had to look that up because I was like bullshit. I call bullshit on that, and then I found like another twenty Google resources to back that up. There's a lot of fuckers breaking the law in Florida. Yeah, I know. Cause actually, there's a lot of fuckers who were breaking the law. Of <laughs> PCAP 2020. But uh, yeah, so if you have One. sex in other than missionary, you're breaking the law. In the state of Florida, men may not be seen publicly in any kind of strapless gown. Now, I don't know what Florida has against strapless gowns. Personally, I think a strapless gown is quite elegant. Um, you got but, some diamantes. But you said men. Yeah, but sometimes yeah. sometimes you want to no, wear no, a strapless I, gown. I, I understand that, but my confusion lie why the straps somehow change that. I don't. Maybe it takes it to a tank top level. I don't know. But what do you mean to a tank top? Like, if you've got no straps, it can't be a tank top. No, I'm saying that a strap gown is fine. A strapless gown, not okay. Yeah, I mean, but how do the straps? Yeah, anyway. I don't know. That's as just as illogical as the other law. I don't know, man, but uh, sometimes you just want to let your shit hang free. You mean let your shoulders not be main- burdened, restrained? Burdened yeah, down by enough. straps. My third cultural tidbit for Florida is Three. that- Three. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I'm laying the smack down with you. Florida's fucking weird. Having sexual relations with a porcupine is illegal in Florida. I mean, I like to think that all forms of bestiality, not great, not legal, not okay. But specifically, Florida has decided that for whatever reason, porcupines seem quite delightful and it's illegal to have sexual relations with them. I mean, if I'm talking about things on the list of things to fuck, a porcupine is a long way down the list. Yeah, I don't know what they've got against porcupines specifically. No, not against porcupines. I'm thinking about how fucking spiky those little bastards are. Yeah, well, like I, I mean, said, I feel like beasti- bestiality on any yes, level. Yes, it is, but fuck me. I mean, but to call it out and, and nothing else. Like, they're not saying this is illegal, this well, is illegal. I mean, yeah, you've just found that somebody in Florida at some point has fucked a porcupine. And then it's ended up in the law. Yeah, I'm guessing that was a dare. And here is insertion of Floridia Man. Oh, man, that sounds fucking... Oh, that sounds so painful. Sounds disgusting. And hey, disgusting. So that's our cultural tidbit. Now I'm thinking about fucking a porcupine. Thank you very much for that. Probably That's shouldn't. something I could have done without. I think that's something our listeners could have probably done without no, as well. No, I mean I'm thinking about actually doing it. I'm just now imagining the act and that's just we- weird and wrong on so many different levels. It truly is. So many levels. Hey, so we're going to talk about Podcaster Palooza. Let's get into the nitty gritty. I have the top eight best and worst moments of PCAP Miami. Right, so come with us. We're going to spill the tea. We're going to lift the skirt. Right, we're going to get going to spill the tea. You never heard that before. Spill the beans. No, babe. Oh, you are so old. You're so old. Oh yeah, we're spilling the tea. We're getting deep and dirty on what happened in Miami this May. 
of course, with Podcast Palooza. I do have to shout out two of our sponsors, though, because hosting this event, of course, was fantastic. But without the support of uh, two amazing companies, we would uh, not have been able to put on the kind of event that we did. So our sponsor shout outs for today for PCAP 2021 Miami is Double Date Nation, of course, DoubleDateNation.com. And our second sponsor is Playhouse LV. So go and sign up to those. That's PlayhouseLV.com. Head over to their websites. They will be in the show notes today. And thank you, True, for the support. Really appreciate it. Cool. All right. So, do you want to do best or you want to do worst? Can't we do one for one? We're going to do the. Uh, we're going to do the worst. So we're going to do the top eight worst things about uh, Podcaster Palooza 2021 in Miami. So we're going to start off easy. This is eight being less worse, one being horrible, world ending situation type thing, right? So, so we're going reverse priority. Yeah, we're counting down like a top fifty. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, countdown. So we're going to start off easy. I'm going to, say, I'm going to lube you up a little bit. Right, and then slide in just gently. Do you know what I mean? And then what? Fuck me and ridiculously then just hard, hard. Yeah, yeah. That's what's going to okay. happen. That's what's going to happen right now. So I bleed out my eyes. That's what's going to happen. Okay. Yeah, you cough up a lung. Yep. But, but I'm but I'm just I'm lubing you up. I'm yeah, just, you're getting me started real slow. Like I'm starting with a small dildo and then increasing. Well, to, I figured you might start with like your little finger, but you're going straight to a small dildo. Okay, that's okay. the worst. All right, so number eight on my list is my lost costumes. And late arrivals and postage issues. Postage issues? (laughs) Postage issues. I drove a full-size truck down to Miami. Daryl, do you want to just really quickly tell the listeners your opinion on the driving of the truck? Just because I know I know that you're well, eager. It, it really depends. It depends on something here because you know this escalated fairly quickly toward a uh, toward a bit of a battle between us on this. So I just want to check. You know, is this going to escalate again, or can I, you know, give my heartfelt opinion, which roll, I gave the first time? Roll, roll the dice, man. You never know. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, when Kate mentioned to me that she was going to get a truck to drive from one location to the other, I was immediately, immediately taken aback thinking that she didn't realise exactly how big trucks were in the US. And I have to say, this is one of those occasions where I can I can absolutely say that was the case. I had a lot of junk in my trunk, man. I needed a truck. You didn't have that much junk. And in fact, you did. I mean... You were thinking that a truck was a normal size Australian truck, but what you ended up with was a truck that could move an entire house in one go, and you needed like a third of that. Okay, so are you you done with the truck? Because I just want to... I mean, I'll never be done with the truck. You got it out there. But I'll be done this time. You okay with it? Driving the truck down? No, it's ludicrous. It was ludicrous. It was What sort of insanity was... What sort of insanity? Who, like, thinks, oh, I'll just hire a truck? Me, I do. For, for, for things that... By the way, here's what I want to say as well. Um, fuck you, U-Haul, for not allowing foreigners to drive your trucks and not clearly advertising that when a foreigner does book your truck. Fuck you for leaving me in a shady out shady neighbourhood at 9pm at night. Unhappy with that. Uh, Pens- night PM. Punsky, Pensky, thank you. Thank you for uh, allowing a foreigner Did to drive you your truck. Ponsky? Ponsky. Yeah, nice. Yeah, good old punters, yeah, those Ponsky. Penskys. I wonder how many more P-pops we can get I into know, our right? microphone. So I lost a uh, a lot of costumes and actually one of my night's costumes just didn't turn up. So I had to kind of improvise. And there was a lot of late arrivals due to postage issues, of course, due to COVID and the like. So for the swag bags, for example, I had to pack them five times because all of the additional swag from everybody kept arriving day after day after day late, right? So I couldn't pack it all in one shot. So that's my number eight. Gotcha. Do, Do you feel like it's easing you in? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Okay. Number seven, trapeze. Trapeze Club. So 40-odd percent of our attendees came in the day before PCAP officially started. And we've been talking to Trapeze Club. They have won a shit ton of awards for being the best club in the United States and everyone wanted to go there, rightly so. And so we had about 40% of the attendees coming in early. I've been talking to Trapeze now for a year and a half. And my worst part about this situation was that... During the time that I spoke to them on three different occasions over the course of this year and a half, the first time we spoke to them, all the membership fees were waived and the entry fees like 50 bucks. So they said, you know what? You guys are coming in, got busloads of people. We're going to do you a favor. We're going to do you solid. We'll drop the membership fee. We'll just call it $50 each for each couple. Call it even. The next time I spoke to them, they said, you know what? Nah, nah, we're going to charge you the membership fee, but we'll give you $20 off. So now all of a sudden it's an $80 entry. Third time I spoke to them to reconfirm, they said, you know what? No money off. We're going to charge you the whole thing. Full price. We're bringing 84 people into their club full price. That's one of my worst things. We ended up still getting the $20 off, thank God, because I was at the end of my tether. 
But what I do want to say is, look, you bring in two busloads of people. Come on, guys. Dick move, bro. It's a dick move. I was really disappointed. Surprisingly good food, though. You know how we've always been against kind of eating at swingers clubs? It's a bit weird, right? I've never been against eating at swingers clubs. <laughs> I've been against it. Then. You have. Right. I have no issue at all with eating at a swingers club. Or I've eaten I've eaten some really good steaks at a strip club, even. Yes, that's never true. been against it. Right, well, I was against it. I don't see a problem with it, as long as it's good food. If you don't do a decent pizza, you're wasting your time. There was no pizza, baby. <gasps> it was chicken, I think. But Good chicken. We got there. On these two buses, like I said, 84 people got in and there was a few of us that were really starving and we were like, you know what? Normally my policy is no food at Swingers Club, but fuck it, I'm going to go for it. Surprisingly good food. So there's that. Okay. Yeah. So my, my other shitstorm against that too, I also specifically asked them, do they want me to do paperwork for all of the attendees prior to so we don't have to get stuck doing the registration process? And they were like, nah, nah, she's all good, mate. Get there, half an hour plus to get everybody registered because everybody had to wait outside. So I'm just saying, guys... Not great. Not great. Yeah. Just disappointing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's all. That's number seven. Okay, you ready? Number six. We're getting we're getting a little bit dirty here. The non attendee on Thursday night that barricaded themselves into the hotel room refused to leave and then we almost had to call police. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> I mean at least they got dragged out. Now you heard about this. How 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 did well, you were I you heard about this and and I told you about the fact that there was some random person that had stayed the night before. Yeah, who's just like, yeah, I'm staying for the weekend. Yeah, I'm going to crash. Mean, I'm going to crash the party. Got to say, big set of stones. It's a big set of balls to be just like, no, I'm just I'm just staying. Just going to stay. I've unpacked my bag. It's in the wardrobe. Like, who thinks they could do that? That's the thing that blows me away the most. This person. Yep. So this is number six. So we had uh, the general manager came and saw me on the Friday at about noon. Takeover started happening and he said, listen, there's a guest in room 502. They're refusing to leave. They barricaded themselves into the room. They want to stay for the entire weekend. We've obviously told them to get out, but hey, stuff's getting escalating. We may require your security company and probably the police are going to get involved. Cool. So that was, uh, they ended up leaving after the threat of police were involved. They left. Thank God. Um, but yeah, haven't had a barricaded person hanging out in their room before. That was new and exciting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to you got to admit that guns are everywhere. I mean, it just you know what it tells me. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna silver lining this. This is mm-hmm. number six. Mm-hmm. We throw that much of a good party. <laughs> oh, <I can't> help. <laughs> Jeez. That people off the street oh, be barricaded man. I themselves. Smell bu- there. I smell <laughs> bullshit. I smell it like a mountain sort of truckload back up. Beep beep beep. A level pe- of a bullshit. Penske truck. A Penske truck. Yeah, yeah. a big one. Right, so that's number six. We've got to stop saying Penske. All right, fine. My number five of the worst moments of Podcaster Palooza 2021. The security and the next door gate crash a couple who were rude as fuck. Yeah. You didn't know that the couple came from next door, did you? No, but I'm really hopeful they're not booking for the next one or have already booked for the next one. They haven't. They haven't. They definitely haven't. All right, so this couple had heard about our event. They were staying locally and they wanted to come to the event. Of course, it was a ticketed event. It was sold out. They couldn't come. They turned up. They turned up. They they made it past uh, security, which I was quite pissed off about. Thanks, security. You do your job, guys. And they got in. And uh, the funny thing about the situation was that as I'm escorting them out, telling them it's a private party, they clearly knew it was a lifestyle party. Clearly knew. And they kept kind of dropping hints to it and saying things like, oh, what's the go with this party? And I said, it's a private party. And they said, yeah walking a few more steps and they said, oh, it looks like a lifestyle party. And I said, it's my private party. Get up to the front and then they dropped, they name dropped some very uh, well-known people in lifestyle and said, well, this would never happen at their events. And I was like, cool, man. Thank you. Here's the door. So that was my, uh, that's my number five. Yep. Interlopers. They're always there. Don't, don't lope. I feel like they're not the only lopers. There were, you know, other people as well who loped. Stop trying to lope at my party, man. It's, it's not great. It's not on. Like Donkey Kong. Gotcha. Right, good. That's number five. Uh, number four is my cancelled contractors running away with the money. You want to talk about this one? You want to field this? No, I mean, it's not – It's not. I don't know, even know what else to say other than what you've just said. It's yeah, just true. Dick Biscuits running away with money rather yeah. than showing up and doing shit, rather than even letting you know in some cases that they weren't going to show up. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, it's, look, we're back to this concept everywhere. Yeah, so we had a couple of contractors who we'd prepaid in 2019 and 2020, of course, and then delayed it with COVID, and uh, they just decided they weren't going to front up and uh, refuse to, to refund the money. So that was that was a bit shit, I've got to be honest. Yeah. A little bit shit. Same shit. That's my number four. Number three was the payment processor. We lost two of them throughout the course of trying to sell tickets. So we had two different payment processors cancel our accounts because of the fact that we are a sex positive community 
And then we finally found an event ticketing agent who then held all funds for 12 months. Yep. So that's pretty shit too. That's number three. Yeah, but we still managed to get the money out of them. So I don't feel like I'm yet getting skull fucked. So, you know. You don't feel like that's a skull fucking? No, I mean, look, this is. They held our money for like 12 months, man. This is kind of feels like normal shit so far. All right, fine. Okay. Normal, terrible shit. Are you you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Bend over, boy. Okay. Okay. Number two on the eight top things that are worst top things about hosting Podcaster Palooza in 2021. We had a contract to go back to Miami and the prices for 2022 have doubled now because everybody's traveling around the world, everybody's coming out, especially in Florida, people are traveling around the US because people want to travel and the Did you say you had a contract or a contractor? Contract. I think you said contractor. Yeah, we had a contract in place for 2022 to head back down to Miami and the hotel because they've been experiencing, rightly so, some really great rates right now with the public because everyone's been traveling down to Florida and the beaches and everything else. They came back and they said, Because Florida's hey, the only place in the world, in the US, it's open. Not anymore. California beaches and stuff are open now. now. But earlier. So they've been having these huge rate spikes, right, where like you go on Expedia, you go on Booking.com, the rates are crazy high. And so they came back and they said, hey, you know how you guys were going to host here next year? Here is the new prices. And they were literally double. Not a one and a half, not a 30% increase, double. So what are you going to do now when they come back to you and say you can host there again? Well, we're already in the process of getting our contracts sorted for 2022. So unfortunately, we're not going to have the time to go back, which is a bummer. It's a bummer. Okay. Do you feel? Uh, Still not there. You kidding me right now? I mean, it's, it's shit, but this stuff happens. Dude. I'm sure it happens to many different events. All right, all right, fine. Number one. Yeah. Of the top eight things, COVID. The lowest eight things. COVID. COVID. Hashtag. That's or it. Just, just COVID. That's it. Just that's it. Not that's even the hashtag. Doesn't even deserve the hashtag. No, no, no. That's it. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Do you appropriate. I mean, I'm not bleeding from the eyeballs, but, you know, it's there's some shitty things in there. There's some definite shitty things in there. I can't believe that you didn't. You well, didn't, I didn't have to live them. Oh, man. You I suck. Didn't live them. You suck. Every you suck balls, eh? Only if requested politely. All right, so that's the that's the bad stuff. That's getting stuck in the mud. Should we talk about the good stuff? Nah, let's nah, leave it just here. Just leave it here? Yeah. No, nah, let's talk about the good stuff. We're going to hit you now with the top eight best things. Because you've got to be yin and yang, right? Just say top eight things. You've been saying top, top eight before. You should have been saying bottom eight and then top eight. I mean, nah. Nah. I don't want to throw this out there, but, well, I've just been through all this negative shit. It's starting to impact my soul. <laughs> Are you ready to... I need some positivity in my life. Can you fucking... Are you ready to elevate your soul? Number eight of the best things about Podcaster Palooza 2021. The costumes. Everybody put in effort. That's number eight? That's number eight. Okay, I actually think that's... Everybody put in effort. Everybody did. Even the people who didn't wear costumes wore costumes. So you're telling me that you wanted me to give you... You just just laid down the gauntlet. Number eight of the best is... Like is like a better example than number two of the worst, I have to say. So you just prefer things to be silver lining? Yeah. Okay. I mean, what do you think about the costumes? They were good. Mm. Deep. <laughs> yeah. Deep, deep, deep. I think people people got really involved. It was really quite epic in a lot of ways. There were a lot of really interesting costumes. There were, each night, even people who are known for not wearing costumes still wore something uh, Mr. to get Jones. involved. Mr. Jones, I'm looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> People got involved. It was great. You know what I did see a lot of? Handmade costumes. Yeah. That's the first for me. So we've been, we've obviously been to other parties and Desire Resorts and other events where there's themed nights. And I, I thought people, I thought I saw a lot more handmade costumes this time around than I think I've ever seen before. I think that's probably got something to do with the fact that the events were not your standard off the shelf. Yeah. You know, events. Mm. Forced people to... To actually sit either. down with the sewing machine and make them hot glue Who's gun. Sitting down with a sewing machine. I tell you who, living the sweet life. Really? I saw a photo on her Instagram when she was sewing her costume together. Oh yeah, that's some serious involvement. That's some serious involvement. She looked good though. Right. Yes. So about the costumes too. What I did find funny was one morning I was cleaning out the playrooms and we had to have a little bit of a lost and found, and it was the night after the Desert Rock Festival. So yes. there was like top hats and hippie glasses and all sorts of crazy sh- fur there things. Was steampunk stuff. Steampunk stuff. Steampunk. And I had to put a photo up and I was like, hey, lost and found, if anybody's left all of these. Yeah. Uh, there was Earrings. Also, there was also uh, nipple pasties that were stuck to the wall for safekeeping. Yeah, yeah. 
which which we thought should go into the lost and found, especially into the photo, just because they were stuck to the wall. Yeah. Did anyone? Did anyone? No one. Those? Uh, somebody did tell me. I know exactly. Didn't claim them though. Yeah, that that person was like, I know who they are. Sideways glance. <laughs> Safekeeping. So they put Safekeeping. Yeah, fair enough. That's my eight. number seven. Pool party. MC'd by. Hang on, that's the one of the good things. Is the leftover shit from a. Yeah, I think that's pretty funny. Okay, that funny. Was, that was the costumes, like the costumes everybody yeah, put yeah. in, and that, the 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 leftover costumes are, was a sidestep. Gotcha. The pool party that was MC'd by a Casual Swinger and the pool games. Yeah, that was that's number seven of my number my seven. top things. Yeah, went all right. There was a lot of masturbating going on there. There was a lot, a lot of, of masturbating, masturbating. And dildos. Yeah, there really it was, was. Yeah, I mean that was some high charged elbow action. That was a lot. Yeah, I, I did enjoy that. I thought that it went really well. I thought everyone was in really high spirits, but that particular pool party was was killer. So okay, I liked that. I remember being somewhat drunk. Drump? Yeah, drump. Okay, cool. That's cool, cool, cool. Mix cool, between cool. drunk and drunk. Okay. Because, you know, sometimes you're a little drunk. Okay. Hey, so that's number seven. Number six is a little bit of a silver lining one. It seems negative, but in fact, I'm going to mind boggle you. It's actually quite positive. Are you ready? I'm going to lay it down. I'm ready for my mind to be extraordinarily okay. boggled. The attendees that didn't attend Cocktail Mingle Hour, so much so that I had to cancel it because they were too busy mingling with each other Fuckers. at dinner and everything else. So they they couldn't attend the, the cocktail mingle hour in the afternoon because they were too busy mingling. That's number six. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I had to drink all those free cocktails by myself. Your people have done such a good job at, like, catching up and mingling with each other. The and let's be free, fair. And the amount of free cocktails. And let's be fair, fucking, that they're like, yeah. They were fucking? I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm wait, just going to roll wait. out. Wait, there were people fucking at this event? I know. Just shocked to me too. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yep. Number five is uh, DJ Ray Love getting some love by the pool. So DJ Ray Love was our daytime DJ. The reason this stood out for me was that, you know, you get you get DJs that are playing at events. They don't normally get a lot of love. And on the last day, we mentioned it was his, you know, finale with us. That was a Sunday. He just about finished his set and we gave him a shout out. We said like, hey, it's his last set. Like, let's give him a round of applause. And one of the PCAP attendees actually went up and hugged him and said, hey, thank you so much for your time and really loved your set and, like, thanks for hanging out with us for three days. And I thought that was some that was some cool shit. Some good love. Yeah, man, like that. Some hot love. I think that just kind of sets the sets the scene for the people at the event, no? Yeah, they're gonna, I think so. They're going to walk up, get out of the pool, walk up, hug the DJ Wet. and be like, thank you. Wet. Yeah. Ooh. I'm sure he hated Sounds it. Sounds a bit gross, actually. But <laughs> understand how that's spreading the love. Right, that's, that's my number five. Number four was the decorations. Because the ones you designed, are you are you self congratulating? This is not self congratulating, actually. I this, feel like it is. No, this is actually about the people that actually put them up. So the the decorators, Me. you didn't put them up. Put all of them up. You did fucking not. I did so. What a liar! I was there the whole time. So the people that put the decorations up were two different companies, and we had a balloon company, and they did amazingly. And then we had a draping company and both of the organizations that put the, the decorations up, different decorations every night, I thought they were just excellent. Yep. They came, they did their job, they were happy about it, they took photos, they were stoked. Of the drapery and balloons, not of the people. Yes, of course. Of yeah, the, I mean, well, you're going to stipulate that shit. No well, photos are taken. The balloon people actually said that um, it was the most creative, fun decoration they've done in a while and so they were pretty excited to really? put this really colourful thing up. Yeah, because I guess, you know, balloon companies, what are you used to, like Sweet 16, corporate thing, you know what I mean? It's maybe yeah. just like the same thing. Figured there might be some clown parties out there that would be pretty exciting and weird though. Definitely clown porn parties for sure. Clown porn parties. Yeah. I'm not sure we can get any more pee pops into our microphone Probably than, than, not. than that. Don't have any pop filters on because they're in a shipping container in Singapore. Yay. All right, number three. Are you ready? Oh, I'm bracing myself. Okay. Walking past the seminar room, right, and hearing – and it was packed for starters – and hearing laughing, clapping, and full-on engagement on my way to have a meeting with the general manager and the VP of operations, and both of them turning to me and saying, what the hell is going on in this room? Our staff keep asking. There's been clapping. There's been cheering. There's been laughter. Like, there's been, you know, roaring what's going on. And it was just super interactive, and I I thought it was funny how the staff on reception were like, dude, this room is going off behind me. What's in there? And it it, it was the seminars. Cool. And then I told them we're just talking about sex, and they were like, "Sex," and I said, "Yeah, sex." And they went, "Wow, cool." Can we come in? Can Allison? we? Can we learn something? And I was like, "Maybe, maybe, maybe you can." Maybe I mean, if you're willing to open yourself to said sex, you may learn something really sexy and exciting. Mm. Yeah. So I thought that I thought that was great. I thought all of the presenters really 
you know, just bored it. Um, and I've never in my life seen Jay and Angie actually practicing to host a presentation. I've seen Jay practice sex quite a lot, like mm. just like backhand in a corner though. Yeah, yeah. He, he definitely practiced that. But I've never actually witnessed people bringing it so much. And so just kidding, Jay. Just kidding. Not Obviously. really, not really. Maybe. Okay, so number two. Mm-hmm. 40% of the attendees coming down to Miami early to meet and mingle. And yep. with a sidebar, the creation of additional events by attendees. Yep. It got so popular that so many people were coming in that we had a guest host, a shark coochie. A shark coochie board. A shark coochie board. Gotcha. The which was awesome. shark coochie board. Which was awesome. Yep. And uh, we had guests actually arranging like food tours and stuff like that. So, so many people decided to come in early that there was a bunch of other things arranged just by the attendees. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I thought that was killer. Um, for starters, I didn't have the bandwidth to arrange that. So when... And shark coochie. Right. So, so when Ali and DJ said they were going to do the shark coochie, for example, I was like, cool, <laughs> I'll turn up and thank you for the food and drinks. Yep. And that's exactly what happened. Yep. Because you're a booze hag. Yep. They, they and f- a food hag. Yep. Correct. What's a food hag, do you suppose? Um, I think you hoard you hoard bread rolls from the buffet, the hotel buffet, if you're a food hag, okay. I, feel, I feel like. So have you done that? No. I don't believe that for a fucking second. Actually, yeah, about 10 years ago in Europe I think I did it. Yeah. I think I took a croissant and I was like, hey, we can have this morning tea. Is this, is this when you had like a can of corn to eat as well? No, that was like 13 years ago in Japan. Come on, <laughs> different different time. <laughs> Different time, different Kate. Different time, different different bread requirement. Are you ready for number one? I am. Number one. Yes. The best things. PCAP twenty twenty one. Yes. The Daryl Surprise. The Daryl Surprise. The Daryl Surprise. There was a Daryl Surprise. There was a Daryl Surprise. And you know what? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna blindside you with this. I listened to a podcast yesterday from Living the Sweet Life. Yep. And they had the Black and Kiki podcast also in studio. So it was the the two different podcasters, four people talking about PCAP and it was PCAP recap volume two. Volume two. And they were bringing up the Daryl surprise. Mm -hmm. And I was absolutely killing myself laughing. I was actually walking down the street laughing out loud. So I look like a crazy person. So it's possible that the Croatian government is probably going to be onto me by now. But what they were saying in that is that um, Bomber and Bell were regaling us with a story about how they they asked me, where's Daryl? And I said, oh, no, Daryl's not coming. And they said on this podcast, they were like, oh, so we did the right thing. You know, we were like, hey, if you need anything, if you want anything, like we're here for you, you let us know, you're on your own, like we got you back, right? We got you. Yep. And I was like, cool, cool, cool. And then they explained how I walked away. And the second that I walked away, both of them turned each other and they were like, fuck Daryl. Fuck that guy. <laughs> fuck that guy for not being here. I'm I like, know. They actually even told me as well. They felt bad. They felt bad for 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 fucking me. <laughs> they felt bad for that. They're like, fuck you, Daryl. But, but it was so funny. The way they tell it on this podcast is literally like, yeah, yeah, we did the right thing. You know, we were, we were offering our help. We were being like, oh, man, that sucks. And then all of a sudden it was, yeah, like I walk away and they're like, that guy doesn't fucking exist anymore. Like, fuck that guy. Yeah. We were very, very concerned. Oh, I thought I talk mad shit about Daryl before I even knew him. <laughs> because I was like, we we're like, so, you know, where's Daryl at? Uh-huh. And, she, and she was like, oh, he, he won't be able to be here. And, you know, you know, in front of her, we we're like, oh, you know, well, let us know whatever you, you know, need us to do, how we can support you. You know, right. and that was all true. But when she left, I said, can you believe this shit? <laughs> Like, this is like the biggest shit of her life. <laughs> and her husband not gonna be there? I was like, I would have murdered you, Bomber. Yeah. Do you, what? Do you came know? I home to divorce right. paper. Exactly. Yes. I was like, on site, it's over. We done. We done. Yeah, and, and then what happened? Then I came. Then you came. Yeah. Run us through what happened. Well. Because I only know half the story, obviously. Well, we we had a few little a uh, few little secret squirrels involved in this. Uh, Jay and Angie were involved. They they helped with the, some of the logistics, and um, also you know a couple of crazy stray lesbians were involved as well. They uh, they helped out with the storage of all of the all of the particular well anything I needed realistically that I had to get from Amazon to run the event to be at the event. So. Shout out to everyone who was involved in that. It was lovely, um, all very extraordinarily helpful, and it was really great to catch up with 
uh, with people that I hadn't actually met before, but you'd spent quite a bit of time with. So that was that was really nice. That, yeah, I mean, if there's anything I can say along this journey through the lifestyle is that people are generally really lovely. The vast majority of people are lovely in terms of except for the interlopers. Except for the fucking interlopers, yeah. 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 But so uh, arrival, I got shuffled in through. Well, I mean, that's a whole story to itself. The I had to talk to the hotel general manager. Oh, let's back it up though. You weren't coming. Mm, you, well, I was. You were not attending. Yeah, yeah, I was. You had to work. No, your I company didn't. just got some funding. You had to work. Yeah, but this is my perception. No, the company hadn't got the funding. Running yeah. at the event. At that point in time. So everyone was asking me where you were. I'm like, the company just got some funding. Daryl can't come. Like, that's where we're at. Yeah. That's the that's a real situation right now. Yeah. So you weren't coming. Yes. And then what happened? How did, how did like, you flew how many hours? What happened? How did you, what happened? I don't even know. What do you mean? I just said to my boss, hey, my wife's got an event on, the, uh, event on that I think I should probably attend, uh, but it's, Right at the time of the mm. funding round of the funding, so you know what would it be okay? And he said, "Why are we even having this discussion? Just right. book the fucking holidays." And so years and years ago, for my thirtieth birthday, you arranged a very big party for me. Mm-hmm. You arranged an entire other bank account, yeah, that you siphoned money into yeah. in order to pay for this elaborate party. Yes, yes. And at the time afterwards, I was like, "You could have an entirely other, entire other family, and I wouldn't even know what's going on." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you managed to get yourself over to Miami mm-hmm. into my event, mm-hmm. and I didn't know. Yeah, I feel like I'm either a dumb blonde, yeah. or I really need to start paying more attention to our bank account because that shit doesn't. And you know what else? The time zone too. I recall you texting me back, yeah, and thinking, "Dude, he's awake pretty fucking early." And then just it fluttering out of my mind and not even thinking about it again. Well, you wouldn't have. You didn't even have a game plan about not texting me or texting me. And uh, being... I actually did. Okay. You, you, you're, you, you might have thought that it was early, but it was definitely on Croatia time because I set a timer on my phone to make sure I wasn't texting you during US hours, direct US hours. Yeah. So, no, no, I can so get this six, shit all So nice. 16 hours flight? 14, uh, 16, 15? Something like that, 16, 15. I don't know. Anything after 10, it all becomes one picture. So from there, uh, yeah, so arrived, had to talk to the GM beforehand so that I could get in because I figured yours, you'd have a strong security anyway. He asked for a photo of me I had, and, and then gave it to the guys at the front. So everybody knew I was coming. Everyone knew what I looked like. So I got shuffled in down the side into um, Jane Angie's room. Uh, they were there getting dressed with... She was taking some fucking time too. Do you know, at one point, Jay came out and he was like, Angie's still getting ready. And I turned to him and I'm like, what is that bitch doing? Like, come that's on. Because, that's because she's in there with Tiff and Rachel. Like, and you. Know. you. And you. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I, At one point, I was ready to bust on in being like, your hair doesn't need to be perfect, Angie. Calm the fuck down yeah. and get your ass out and come party. Yeah. So, no, that's not that's not what the problem was. So anyway, yeah, got dressed. Well, I actually had a shower, a quick shower to wash the to wash the uh, the plane out of my ass crack. You got to wash that plane out of your ass oh, crack. Oh man, I'm you got to. Seriously, it's the first thing I actually said to Jay and Angie when yeah, I hit yeah, when I hit Houston. It's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. It's, you got to yep. do it. Yeah. So um, yeah. So then from that, uh, walked outside. Put up. I had a mask on, a full full mask as well, uh, and a costume underneath that. Uh, and walked outside, Jay and Angie kind of lined you up to, to greet me mm. without you knowing who, who I was, and the mm-hmm. mask was something you didn't really like, so did not it scared like it. you a little bit. Also, that mask smelled like marijuana. What? Did sure, it, sure it did, Daryl. It smelled like fucking pot. Mm-hmm. You kept asking me, why do you smell like pot? And this was a fucking mask. Sure. Anyway, so turned up. The Amazon driver was like getting a real. Got down on one knee. <laughs> Got down on, on, on a knee to to – to greet or to introduce myself to you and you ran away, basically. Yeah. Yep. Said, fuck that, I'm out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was only – so I stood up and tried to kind of grab you to prevent you from running away and I took the mask off with one hand. Yeah. So here's what I'm thinking at this point in time. They have served me up with this guy who's really into being a submissive and looked like he was on a chain and leash and had a full mask on. And, and I'm not about that life. So I was like, Nah. Please stop. Um, I'm pulling the strangest face right now because <laughs> I do not believe that you're not about that life. Not like that. Not like random stranger dude. I'm still with a fucking full mask pulling on. the face. That's right. total horseshit. 
Anyway, so yeah, then you took it off and obviously you were there. So you flew over, you were there for two nights. Yeah, that's all I could do. Yeah, that's all you could do. So you so flew I the week, I basically, Friday. Yeah, I, I, had, uh, I took the Friday and Monday off and was there for the weekend. Yeah, so you flew Friday morning first thing, Yep. got there Friday night, stayed Friday night, Saturday night, left Sunday afternoon. Sunday, yeah, to get back here mm. on Monday afternoon because you lose a whole day on you the way back. You lose a whole day. Basically. Time zones, they do Time that zones. to you. Yeah, they fuck you up. They fuck you up. Fuck you up. So that's, uh, that's my top ten. That was Sorry, my top, eight, my top eight. You sure that's number one, I mean. Yeah. So what about all the over over the course of the the worst and the best? Do those align to what your expectations were? Do you have anything else to add? No, I think that's about right. Yeah. 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 I mean, I would have, wouldn't have thought I would have been number one, but you know, happy to be there. Feel like I should give myself a high five. Probably not. Or a trophy. No. I need a trophy. No. Number one husband. <laughs> What are you fucking laughing about? Give me a trophy. That's pretty funny. I deserve a trophy. I've always said you're pretty funny. Somebody should send me a trophy. Nah. Yeah, number one husband. Yeah, nah. And with that crossed out and like cunt written under it. Mm -hmm. What do you think? That seems more apt. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. So if you're curious about what Podcast A Palooza is, guys, it is actually, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but it is a three night full hotel takeover that we had in Miami in May 2021. So I probably should have mentioned that, right? Probably. Probably should have actually said that at the beginning. Yeah. So, ah, well, what hey. are you going to do? <laughs> All right. If you made it this far and you figured it out, good for you. Good for you. Good hey, for you. Let's take a quick break and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to tell you guys some announcements. Hey, we're back. We're back again. We're back again. Because we're back at the original kickoff as well. We're back, yes, at the, okay. at the kickoff. We held some competitions. Over the course of PCAP, we played games in the mobile app. We had engagement levels. And we had three prizes we're going to give away, and that was based on people who had points, right? And they had to get points by engaging and and being friendly and everything else. So I have three winners I'm ready to announce. Are you ready? Why three winners? Because that's the – That's how many prizes you have? That's how many prizes I have. Okay, sweet. So you can't calm your tits. I don't – All my jets? Okay. The first. The first winner. Actually, no. We'll go go three. We'll go third up. That's not true. So third up is a lifetime membership to Double Date Nation or a casual toys voucher, and that went to Peppy Pineapple. Peppity Pineapple. Congratulations, Peppy Pineapple. Prize number two is a three hundred dollar casual toys voucher. I feel like there should be a drum roll or something before these. I mean, I can why, probably do why it. Did you not put a drum roll? I can the, in in post edit. It's too late though. It's not. It's I too can, late. Look, insert drum roll here. Okay. Pause for silence for drum roll. Pause for silence for drum roll. So three hundred dollar casual toys voucher sponsored by PCAP twenty twenty one went to Christian and Anna. Ooh. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. But the big ticket item mm. is a free ticket <gasps> to PCAP 2022 or PCAP on call, which is coming up soon. Free ticket. Free, free whole ticket. T- whole free whole ticket. Whole fucking ticket. And this is one. Is it for me because I actually. No, you don't get it. You don't, you, you're not. You're void. You're void. What do you mean I'm void? I'm not void. You're void. I've still got my sticker on. Nah. It says void if removed. It's still on. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Congratulations, DJ and Ali. You guys have won a free ticket. For a three nights of podcast or blazer event in the future, whichever one you want to pick, you pick it. It's yeah. Up to you. Uh, terms and conditions. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, I actually can't say. Sure no, there, are there aren't any. Yeah. You just let us know when you want to come. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So that's my that's my announcement of winners. Um, look, I got to say though, 2031 PCAP 2031 is really booking up. So if you're planning <laughs> on it, then probably uh, probably not going to be a good option. There's only the only room I have left for you guys is the one underneath the stairwell. Yeah, you can Harry Harry Potter that yeah, shit. Yeah, you can Harry Potter the fuck. Actually, can, can we though? If you're oh, playing, fucking hell. I if can you're playing see the music and stuff, I'm going to... And cut because otherwise yeah, no, we'll I pay the money. I, I know, that was that's that was it. <laughs> we don't pay royalties on that. That was that was less than 10 Bro- seconds. But broke ass. All right, fine. Let's now, uh, let's give a shout out real quick. I just want to talk about the, the content creators that came because obviously the event wouldn't happen without these people, right? So I'm just going to give a shout out real quick. Probably fun. would, but they wouldn't be there. Gonna, well, they wouldn't be there. I'm going to rattle them off. So we got a thing. Swing outside the lines. Casual swinger. Two hot wives. Black and kinky. Monogamous marriage. Sapphic swingers. Average swingers. Torrid souls. And special shout outs to Expansive Connections, Live in the Sweet Life and Naughty Gym. Thank you guys so much for coming. You were fantastic. And all the people that actually hosted PCAP will be in the show notes. And please do go give them a follow. Show them some love. Agreed. They're awesome peeps. Yeah. Hey, guess what? What? We had some new Patreon people this month. Okay. Yeah. Cool. One uh, of them's one of them's Peppy Pineapple. Oh. Uh, I feel like she's trying to uh, f- win some I, more prizes. Yeah, I feel like she now now I feel like we have to change the prize. Give nah. it to someone else. Nah. Won't no? do that. No. Nah. Sure. She's too peppy. <laughs> 
It would be it would be horrible. It would be well. What would happen if you turn a peppy pineapple into something else? Well, then it's an inverted pineapple, and it kind of still works. No, no, no. I don't mean turn it upside down. I mean, well, no, but a peppy pineapple kind of stands. By the way, without pop filters, peppy pineapple is probably the worst thing that you could ever say. Did I mention our pop filters are in our storage container in Singapore? Like, please, guys, don't give us too much shit. It's all right. I'm used to shit. Yeah. Send your shit my way. Do. Do that. Not not actual shit. No, for real, though. Secretive shit. We had three new Patreon supporters. So thanks, Sam, Peppy Pineapple, and Terry. You guys are awesome. Really appreciate the hell out of you for supporting us. And uh, coming up, we are talking about a Croatian castle party where we had a serious, serious fucked up communication issue. Correct. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that on the next episode. Are you excited about talking about that? I am. Yes. Yeah. I am. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah? Yep. You seem very uh, monologuish. Yeah, I'm kind of hungry. You hungry? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. So when's, <laughs> when, when, when are we doing the next uh, episode? The next episode, we're probably going to not record that now because you're hungry. And yeah. You seem to be, you know, flattened out. I'm flat. I'm hungry. Yeah. The big fuck off steak over there with our name on oh it. Oh my God. I'm so excited about the steak. Um, actually, can we just say one thing before we close out? Real quick, I need to understand. I was away from you for six weeks. Yes. How did that feel for you? Me, <laughs> Shit. Because no, I mean, no, I mean not just that, but like, I mean, obviously, I wasn't here for you, and Penny had an eye surgery, all that stuff. But yeah, you were basically the most horrible human being available. Your dog went in for eye surgery, then you complained about the extra money on the credit card. Um. Yeah. It was a lot. Hey, no, seriously. Well, yeah, it was a lot. It was fucking like dog eye. We oh. basically replaced. She's basically the Steve Austin of dogs. Yes, it's an old reference, people. Look it up. Mm-hmm. Steve Austin. You don't even know who Steve Austin is, do you? Is it Stone Cold Steve no. Austin? No. No. It's a $6 million man. He's the original Steve Austin. Did the wrestling Steve Austin name himself after that Steve Austin? Is that what's going on? I think you. there's a wrestling Steve Austin. That's who Stone Cold Steve Austin is. Oh, right. You uh. mean The Rock? Oh, you are so wrong, and it's so fucking funny. You ha- no, dude. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're right. I'm such a fucking wrestling fan that this would be a big surprise to anyone who knows me. It is me. a big surprise. Yeah, the original Steve Austin. Mm. Six million dollar man. Apparently, back in the 80s, six million dollars got you a uh, robotic eye. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, the figurine now is worth about $6 million as well, just quietly. I used to look through his – he had a hole in the back of his head, the figurine that you could look through. It was a magnifying glass. I only know that because of the 40-year-old version, Virgin movie. That's the only reason I know that. But I yeah. want to actually get some. So the last episode, I did a review of going to Houston for, like, the meet and greet and going to the eye candy party at Colette. So my question to you specifically, not if you miss me and if it was weird for me not being here six weeks is a long time – how did you feel about me going to, like, swingers clubs without you? What was that like? Um, I think the vast majority of this stuff is is fine for me or in some cases a turn on. It just depends on what it is. And, and I read actually read today blog from Monogamish that really managed to capture exactly what I like about, you know, you being outside of, uh, you know, be, being outside of you or outside of what, what, I, what I would – I'm really fucking this up, by the way. But being not around or not, not. Hey, while you're looking it up, why don't I actually introduce it? So, what you're talking about is you read today the latest episode or the latest blog from Monogamish Marriage Blog, right? And that came out and it's their third edition in their Miami Diaries, all about PCAP 2021. And you read it and you took a screenshot and you sent it to me and you were like, he just put this in words that I've never been able to do before. So you're saying that that you're, you're saying basically this situation and what he wrote kind of sums up how you feel when I go and attend events and stuff on my own. Yeah, to quote Mister, I get turned on in any scenario where a woman is unapologetically selfishly sexual, and the effect is multiplied tenfold when the woman is my wife. I, I think that is a perfect sum up of exactly how I feel. So it's the unapologetically sexual where y- you just do what you want or you know, and involve me in it as a as a part of the conversation or as a side note to that. Not necessarily do I have to be involved in every thought or everything or every texture along the way. But yeah, it's it's very sexy to to see you do something you want, and it would be really sexy to see you do it whenever you want. It doesn't make you jealous that I'm potentially having you know air quotes fun. While you're sitting home. Yeah, we should probably go back to the whole, you know, agreement of how we were going to set up 
accounts and see whether I could pick up because you you know have this belief that men could pick up just as easily as women, mm-hmm, which is yeah. which is totally false, of course. Hold on a second. We actually said this on a Patreon episode, so it was a special Patreon episode where we said we were going to set out and have create accounts and see if we can get dates for the six weeks that I was away. Yeah, I got I got um, a nice round number mm-hmm. being zero. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, 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 yeah. And and I think for the first hour of when you had it up on STC, you had thirty guys reach out to you. Um, yeah, it was about about thirty. That seems about right. Yep, yep. Yeah. To which you rejected all of them. Uh, yeah, that seems about right too. I sp- Not you about know, right. That's exactly fucking right. You know what? No, I, I whittled away 28 because I'm also in woodcraft, so I whittled those away. Wow. Thank you. You like that? No. Really? Please don't do that again. I'm a um, – A whittler? No. no a wordsmith? I'm a, I'm a beaver because beaver. It just got worse. I mean, beavers. Just, you're, digging, you're digging a hole. Whittle. No, because then I would be yep. another animal. A wombat? That dig wombat, and then I'd be a wombat. Yeah. No, so I I got rid of twenty eight of the, the let's call it a thirty person. Let's call it, it 30, was more than thirty. Let's call it it was fifty plus by the end of the by the time you actually got there. Let's just call it thirty, right? We'll just say it's thirty. Okay. So or fifty. I mean. tw- twenty eight of them I was well, was not interested in, and two of them I thought, okay, I'll give these guys a go, and one of them instantly his reaction was like, oh, send me some more pictures. Yeah. And now our profile has pictures of us hiking, like back, like Every, rock we've climbing, got all, we've got all wine, aspects whatever. of everything from sexy through to normal. Correct. So there's Except ones, my cock. There's there ones of me no in lingerie. Of my cock. That's what I was about to say. There's ones of me in lingerie. There's yep. ones of my butt. There's ones of my tits. There's one. No, none of my cock. There's no, not, not on a the, single photo. Not of on my the cock. not on the public photos, but on the backstage pass. The public there, photos. <laughs> the public photos, but on the backstage pass there is. So what he has seen is photos of my face, photos of my body, photos of me in lingerie, photos, photos, photos. And then he said, hey, send me some more photos. And I was like, what do you want at this point? Like just basically say nah. open pussy. Like yeah, is that nah. what you're chasing? Yeah, but no. Nah. That's what he was chasing. Was it? Yeah. Did he actually ask for open pussy? No, he didn't. But then I, he said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm super busy. Um, maybe just send me some photos. And I was like, dude, what do you like? Come so, on. Yeah, okay. So out. Yeah. Well, line, I'm not line, done. Red lines are done. Yeah, and then the other guy, his, um, all of his photos were with him but with somebody else like cut off out of the picture that was okay. hugging him. And I think I sent that one to you and you're like, oh, cool, that's his girlfriend. Yeah, I felt like it was. Yeah. yeah. So, so that was a was a bum situation. Yeah, but you still managed to, still managed to catch up with someone. Yep. Right, guys. Uh, so that has been, I guess, our version of a PCAP recap, which is the eight best and worst moments of PCAP 2021. Yeah. And uh, with, a, with a side note of me spending six weeks in Texas. I am a Texas, by the way. I have cowboy boots now. You're a Texas. Texan. Yeah. I don't think you are. Yeah, I think I am. No, I mean, you don't wear them often enough. I think I might wear them tomorrow. You don't wear short, short shorts with them. It's so. pretty hot, though. It's like 37 degrees. So that's why you wear the short shorts to keep so. so your butt stays cold. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if you guys want to join us for Podcaster Palooza events, just head to podcast-a-palooza. It's in the show notes and you can come to our next events later this year or next year. But uh, that's been the kind of the wrap-up. Best and worst moments. Thank you very much. Thank you. COVID, uh, no thank you. No thank you. I, I don't want to say the F-bomb, but like in, the, in that realm. Gotcha. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like. Backing out. Backing out. I'm done. You done? Yep. Okay. Going to get dinner. All right, let's get dinner. Bye. Bye. Bye.